Hello and a very warm welcome to a new show and a new political era. Tomorrow, one of these two will be chosen as our new Prime Minister. I promise that on this programme we'll bring you good news along with the bad. But whoever wins faces an almighty job. It's not been a pretty race. No new taxes. Maxing out the country's credit card is not right. But the victor has enormous problems to confront. Energy prices making life impossible. I think it's a terrifying winter ahead for everybody. The war here in Ukraine, one of the big reasons for the problems we face. Putin's already shut down a major pipeline. The squeeze is on. So there's one big question for us this morning. What should the next Prime Minister do first? Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak are both here. And we'll hear from Elena Zelenska, the First Lady of Ukraine, about her fears, the path of the war and Eurovision. And with me throughout the show to chew it all over, Cleo Watson, who worked for Boris Johnson and Theresa May in number 10, Birmingham's finest, the comedian Joe Lysett. Hello. And the Labour frontbencher, Emily Thornbury. A very warm welcome to you. Now, first, a quick word about our show. We are here to ask important questions, the ones that you want answers to from the people going to discuss Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. Now, Claire Watson, you know the Tory party well. You've worked in government. Tell us something that we don't know about both of them. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. Um, I think something very interesting about Rishi is he has his reputation as a very clean liver. He doesn't uh, drink, he doesn't eat meat, but he has an unbelievable sweet tooth, <laughs> which seems a bit sort of against the grain for him. Liz, I don't know so well personally, but I think something quite interesting about her is she's been on and off in the cabinet since 2014. Mm. And that's a lot of kind of in-party fighting for that period. Now. Liz Truss is very much the bookie's favourite to be announced tomorrow as the 56th Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She's gone from being a student Lib Dem activist to a Tory cabinet minister and now on the verge of the biggest job in the business. And I'm delighted to say that she's here with us this morning. Thank you so much. Good morning, much Laura. Great to be in. here. Yeah, we're delighted to have you here. Now, the ballot is closed, so nothing you say in the next 15 minutes is going to affect the result. But unless every single political crystal ball in the country is wrong, you are about to become Prime Minister. Can you believe Going for some reaction from our panel, because listening to that interview at the desk and seeming to applaud Joe Lysett, the comedian, Cleo Watson, who has lots and lots of experience in number 10, because she worked for Theresa May and Boris Johnson. Now, Joe, I'm going to let you calm down a bit before I ask you what you thought I love of it. it. Um, well done, Liz. <laughs> Cleo, what did you make of that? I mean, Liz Truss has campaigned in a way that has tickled the Tory party, mm. but what did you think of what she was trying to say to the country? I mean, I still think that the key question that you asked that, that, that she dodged best of all was what happens if Putin really does turn the gas supplies off this winter? And with everything we've seen in the last couple of days with Nord Stream 1, it's, it's perfectly likely. And so that, that real sense of what's happening in the short term, away from fracking and North Sea and so on, mm -hmm. we need an answer. And I think she's going to have to answer that sooner rather than later. You're absolutely right about kind of pivoting from, you know, she, she said what you see is what you get and, and uh, Sturgeon's comment about, I hope she doesn't govern about, uh, I, I hope she doesn't govern the way she's campaigned. Mm. And it's quite an important pivot. She's mm. gonna have to very quickly win over the public. But there are different versions of what is going on inside the Tory party. Now look at these two front pages. You have the Sunday Express carries a plea from Boris Johnson for unity, telling his colleagues to stop fighting and back the new prime minister. But shock horror, if you follow politics, the mirror is suggesting that some Tory MPs are already preparing to send in letters of no confidence in the new prime minister. To say nothing, many people would tell you that they still live on February 24th. We try to make it look like a normal life. This is a war against people, against civilian people, not against the army. It's the war of destruction. They're trying to scare us, to use, well, the scorched land tactics and then grab depopulated towns and cities. But Ukrainians try to stay optimistic. 
We do not know how long we will have to hold the lines. We are like running a long distance stretch and trying to kiss our kids, hug our loved ones and live on, if at all possible. Are you afraid? Oh yes, we all are. But you cannot be so scared as to not do anything. Question. What is the new Prime Minister going to do first? The energy crisis is unavoidably at the top of that list. The First Lady of Ukraine told us to remember her country and they are counting the price in casualties, not in pennies. From Liz Trust this morning, help is coming and within a week she promised. I can't help thinking that although she said at the beginning of the leadership campaign that there would be no handouts, that reality has started to bite. The conversation with the public, with all of us, is going to be very different to the conversation that Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak have had with their party this summer. Maybe the hard work starts now. Hard work here too. See you here next week or catch up on anything you missed, of course, on the iPlayer. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you here next week, same time, same place. Goodbye.